today from Belcher Town Community Field for the season opener of the Frontier Red Hawks as they play the Belcher Town Orioles. Belcher Town is coached by Ed Weisick and your Frontier Red Hawks are coached by Don Gordon. Glad to be with you this afternoon, everybody. I'm John Meiser along with Joe Thompson. We're very excited to be with you here to present you the season opening game of Frontier Red Hawks base, uh, football excuse me, <laughs> on the FCAT. I'm John Meiser along with Joe Thompson here making his broadcasting debut here. Uh, Joe, glad to be with you here. How do you feel today? Um, I'm excited to see a good competition here, John. I'm uh, excited too, yeah. Now, so uh, Frontier comes into this season having uh, made the playoffs five straight years in a row. They went six and five last season. Uh, I know you were telling me beforehand, you know a couple of the kids on the team, but what were your thoughts about them uh, after last season? Oh, well, um, well, they're a very athletic team. That's very, that's for sure. Um, I think they have a lot of potential. It's really, it's really how well they play together. Yeah, team camaraderie and uh, uh, chemistry is definitely a big key to their success. And um, you know, it's funny. We <laughs> just before we uh, went on the air here, we had a slight malfunction with the uh, national anthem. <laughs> I, <laughs> we're, we're experiencing a. We're, we, we, folks have to understand. We're, it's been very windy this afternoon. We they had to push the start of the game back from 7 p.m. to 4 because apparently there's a mysterious sort of mosquito problem going on and. Uh, uh, the national anthem started playing, and uh, my roster knocked over the microphone stand, and the whole anthem went out. So we didn't hear most of the anthem, which uh, I've never uh, had happen before. Uh, I apologize to those that uh, were expecting to hear the anthem uh, but didn't. Uh, well, you know, it's live television. You never know what's going to happen. <laughs> so just got to go with the flow here. But uh, we'll be starting momentarily. Um, yeah, Joe is a junior from uh, Frontier Regional High School, so um, he's getting his first action here today. Filling in for Chris Collins. Chris, unfortunately, couldn't make it here today, so I'll be uh, filling in for you all here. Your starting quarterback for Frontier is uh, Garrett DeForest. Uh, he's a senior from, Mo uh, from Frontier, excuse me, from Frontier. He's the captain, one of the th one of three captains, actually, on the team, along with Andrew Logan and Donovan Hoffman. And... Um, it's weird, uh, Felchertown didn't seem to have a roster uh, for some reason. I asked the coach beforehand, so I'm just a tiny little bit unprepared here as we start the game, but we'll, we have, uh, we'll figure it out as we go along here. We have uh, some people with the Felchertown rosters. Yeah, and, uh, and, this, and the coin toss is getting underway here as we start the broadcast here. We'll find out who goes first. Donovan yeah. It's funny, the Patriots 60. always like to defer the opening coin toss so they get the ball the second half. It's kind of an interesting yeah. strategy. You often see them try to double score at the end of the first half and at the beginning of the second half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a very, very common down. tactic. In Number 20, Hunter yes, Plains definitely. Smith. Number one, Cal Daston. And uh, you were talking about seven, Garrett seven, DeForest. Curtis uh, Walter. Actually, the coach made the switch from him. He was actually a running back last year. Made him the quarterback this year requires a lot of athletic talent to be able to make that switch. And number 54. That's interesting. So that's quite an adjustment going from running to more throwing and being athletic. Uh, but it'll be nice to, if he can maybe throw in his running uh, skills at times if, uh, if he faces some pressure. Absolutely, absolutely. Be a bit of a on-the-move quarterback. Yeah, very agile. So that'll, that'll be good. Very active. Uh, and the coin toss is being tossed right now as we speak. And we'll find out in just a moment who has... Uh, ball to start the game and uh, referees are making a uh, telling the players right now it looks like and I don't see a signal yet there's they've been Belcher Town has won the coin toss apparently, but they have deferred to the second Belcher half. Town it looks like the coin toss. They have deferred to receive so the Frontier will half. get the ball to start the game. Sounds, sounds good to me. All right, so let's we'll see how that strategy works out. Like I mentioned, Don Gordon is the head coach of Frontier. Scott Dredge is the assistant coach for the Frontier Red Hawks. Brian Delaney and Joan Hildreth are also some assistant coaches as well. Assistant coaches. You know, it's funny, the director of athletics for Frontier actually used to work for my high school, uh, Carl Sear. He was actually my English teacher in 12th grade, believe it or not. Wow. Yeah, small world we live in. <laughs> I have to talk to him after the game. I haven't seen him in like 10 years. My high school <laughs> reunion is coming up in 10 years from now, or, or this year, I should say. It's, uh, it's, it's funny how it works out like that. <laughs> yeah, crazy. Yeah. Yeah, you won't have to worry about a 10-year reunion for a long time. You're still, you're still, you haven't even finished high school yet, so still kind of young here. So we'll be starting momentarily, like we said, uh, uh, Belcher Town won the coin toss. They have deferred to the second half, so Frontier will get the ball to start the game. 
So we'll get our first look at uh, how Garrett DeForest does as a quarterback as opposed to being a running back last season. Riarcus McMillan will be uh, one of the running backs today for Frontier along with Sam Hebert. And uh, yeah, so like you said, uh, Joe, you know, definitely you know, chemistry is definitely a good uh, key component of the season. Uh, it's hard to believe that with the system, the way the high school athletics work, the Frontier made the playoffs last year despite only going six and five. Yeah, it's very, very surprising. Number 35, Joe Vasilio. So we're just getting started momentarily here. That uh, Frontier will receive the uh, opening oh. kickoff. And number 10, yeah. Garrett DeForest. So we're going to start a little earlier this afternoon. We thought we were going to be starting at 4 o'clock. It's about 5 over 4 of 4. Doing so. the kicking for your Orioles is number 20, Hunter Klingsmith. Okay. Hunter Klingsmith will kick the opening punt to start the game. Looks like uh, Yarkis Millman is uh, returning for Frontier along with Jack Basilio. Yeah. Okay. So there you have it. McMillan will return it. Uh, yeah, usual conditions. You don't usually have a, a windy day here, but uh, it's windy to start the game here. You know, you're used to, used to being under the lights, but because of a mosquito problem, we're uh, starting uh, underneath some daylight here. So uh, you think that might play a factor in today's game here? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm, I mean, I'm sure they practice it about this time, so maybe it'll make them uh, more ready to go. Yeah, we'll see how that plays into the game here. Is, uh, number two for Frontier receives it, and he gets out to about the 35-yard line to start. That was uh, McMillan, like he said, receiving the opening kickoff. And, uh, that, that really looked like a, a rough tackle there. It went on over his head. Yeah, it was a pretty rough tackle. Frontier will start first and 10 from their own 34-yard line. So Frontier will start from their own 34-yard line, not the 35 like I originally thought. Oh, it is the 35. I beg your pardon. We're just trying to figure out the spot on the field. It is the 35-yard line. Some question whether it was the 34 or 35. It is the 35-yard line to start. It looks like Frontier goes to a running play to start the game, and he has tackled a few yards ahead. Gain of about three or four on the play. 35, Jack Vasilio. Initial stop by number 16, Owen Sedlak. Owen Sedlak with the, with the uh, tackle there. Yeah, very, very nice the stuff there Second down to stop and the running play. So only a gain of one yard on the play for Frontier. It's second and nine, so yeah, very nice tackle. See how Belchertown's defense does as the game progresses. Second and nine from the 36. They go to the ground again. McMillan does a nice job avoiding some tackles and uh, Gets to close to about the 45 yard line, I think. Uh, first down on the play. Very nice run there, very nice. Tackle by number 20, Hunter Klingensmith. Hunter Klingensmith with a tackle that time for Belchertown. And the ball is spotted on the 46 yard line, so close to midfield here for Frontier. First down for Frontier. They give it off again to McMillan. Mill and try to find his way through traffic, and he is tackled once again. And ball's to about midfield. So, uh, Frontier going on the ground here to start here, Joe. Yeah, yeah. I have noticed in the past it's not very common uh, to throw. Just been told McMillan's uh, nickname is Edo, so it's actually been a little easier to remember here. <laughs> His real first name is Riarchus, but he goes by Edo, so, so it's good to know here. Another run that time from Frontier, and this will be third down coming up. Doesn't look like they got much yards there. Yeah, not very much. I mean, Belcher Town some good uh, run defense to start the game here. Tackle by number 72. And there was no gain that time for Frontier, so they stay right where they are. Third and six at midfield at the 50. And they give it off to number 19, Josh Samaski. And does he have enough for a first down? Um, don't think he quite got there. No, he did get a first down on the play. So, so big third down conversion for Samaski there for Frontier. Pick up of seven yards. Very nice. Frontier kind of marching up the field right now. Yeah, marching up the field. Belchertown unable to get a third down stop. So another first down for Frontier as they have done a nice run to start the game. And uh, DeForest gets tackled on the run that time. 
and then there you can see his old running back uh, talents coming out. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, it definitely helps to be agile, that's for sure, in today's day and age. And, uh, the quarterback is really transforming into a much more athletic type type build. You know, it doesn't just have to throw the ball, it really has to be able to move his feet. Yeah, it's very true. You know, you don't see a lot of pocket passers anymore. You definitely have to be more athletic these days, given the way the game has changed. And uh, Frontier carries the pile on uh, on a third and seven. And the tackle is made. That well, was really just a, a big cluster of people right in the middle. Yeah, just kind of carried the crowd with him, it looks like. <laughs> yeah, he's the type of guy that just really goes big, big strong. Now turn goal the tackle looks like, so. And it is, looks like third and five right now for Frontier on the 38 yard line. So they're into Belton Town territory. And they're not gonna get anything that time. Good pressure by Belchertown. They pushed uh, Frontier back on that. Lost about a yard or two, I think. But it's gonna be fourth down. There's some excellent uh, third Josh down defense Samaski. by Belchertown. Very nice third down defense. It'll be fourth down coming up. We'll see if Frontier attempts a field goal or if they punt it. Uh, how does, their, how does their special teams look like? Have you seen their kicking game at all? Uh, I, I'm not entirely sure who their, uh, who their kickers are this year. And it looks like Frontier is going to attempt a field goal. Dylan Appinell with the kick. Nice punt there. That's oh, a punt, excuse me. I thought he was going to try a field goal. I, my apologies. So it is a punt. They do not attempt a field goal. And Belchertown will get the ball back. Be very impressive if they just came out with a 50-something yard field goal right at uh, right yeah. the start right <laughs> of the gate. Yeah, so it looks like it is a touchback. The ball ended, uh, landed in the end zone. And so Belchertown will start from about their own 20. But, uh, yeah, both teams look good on that first uh, possession there. Uh, fr uh, Frontier has shown some good run uh, running game, but uh, Belchertown stopped them uh, after they find, kind of figured out the run. <laughs> yeah. And now we get to see the, the offense at Belchertown. Now yeah. we get to see Belchertown's offense. Defense, 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 defense. They go on the ground. Ooh. Number one for Belchertown gets tackled. Number one. A bit of a pinch tackle Mal there. Gaskin. Two players really Howard Gaskin on the... He gets tackled. Oh, sorry, what was that, Joe? Uh, really a pinch tackle there. Two players came out from different directions, got him at the bottom and the top of his body. It helps when two people oh. tackle as opposed to one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Pick up on six on the play. And a six-yard pickup on the run that time for Belchertown. It'll be second and four from their own 26. A couple minutes into the first quarter. And they go on the ground again, uh, but uh, this time Frontier was ready for it. They stop him on second down. Yeah, very good job by Frontier there, stopping the ball right where it was. So it'll be third and three coming up for Belchertown after the stop was made. Pick up of one on the play, third they, down uh, three. Third down stop here by Frontier would be pretty good. Yeah, Frontier can get a stop here. They'll definitely have the momentum early. Belchertown's backed up on their own 27-yard line. Third and three coming up for Belchertown. About six and a half minutes left in the first quarter. They go to the passing game, and oh, it looks like a face mask to number 11. That's going to be a penalty. I don't know what was he was thinking there, but uh, a, face, a grab of the face mask, that should be at least a 10 or 15-yard loss there for Belchertown. That's going to be a long fourth down. Yeah, he got right into the pocket. I don't know why he didn't tackle. Yeah, unnecessary there. I don't know why they didn't tackle him either. This should have been a, a tackle. Yeah, fa a face mask is not smart. Very undisciplined uh, penalty from Belcher t uh, from yeah. Frontier. Excuse me. Yep. It was a very good, very good uh, penetration of the defense there. It's just improper execution of the tackle. Yes, very improper execution. So it's actually, I beg your pardon, it's actually going to give Belchertown a free first down. It was against uh, Frontier, so it'll be first down. And that's, a, that's a bummer for Frontier right there. So a, first, a free first down for Belchertown after what uh, really should have been a three and out for Frontier. It gives uh, Belchertown some extra yards here. They're up to the 37-yard line. 
They give it off to number two for Belchertown, and there is a tackle. Yeah, both tackle by number 56 for Frontier. Both teams' uh, run games looking very strong here to start off. Yes, very strong to start off. Tackle by number 55, Connor Hoffman. Connor Hoffman with the tackle that time for uh, Frontier. Gain a two on the play, it'll be second and eight. Second and eight from the 39 for Belcher Town after the, after the penalty. And they're going for a passing play, it is incomplete down the field. Pass intended for Cal Daskin. Yeah, that's a, that's a rare sight to see there. There's John. Third, yeah. Not usually going to the pass in high school football. No, you don't. You definitely see a lot more running plays in high school, but uh, they decided to go dead deep down the field that time, and it's incomplete. So it'll be third and eight. So we'll see how uh, Frontier learned their lesson from before, hopefully oh, not yeah. to grab another face mask. Uh, they can get a third down stop here. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see how this drive turns out. Third and eight from the 39. Reverse, reverse, reverse! It looks like they try a little flea flicker here. Oh. And there's a flag on the play. This will all be negated, it looks like. A, uh, number one is tackled out of bounds. Okay, number one, Cal Bascom. Now that was a Bascom tackle. Two. Very nice run. Uh, McMillan, I'm not sure what the call the is, play. but... Yeah, we'll see what the call is here. McMillan with the tackle. So it looks like I don't believe this is going to stand here unless, it's, uh, unless this goes the other way. Trying to sort out the laundry here on the field, as they say. <laughs> Seems as though it's going to be against Belchertown. Penalty is a chop block against Belchertown. So a chop block against Belchertown is called on third and eight. So that's going to be a, I believe it's a 15-yard penalty, if I'm not mistaken. At least, at least 10 or 15. It is a 15-yard loss, so fourth and long for Belchertown. They are going to have to punt. So it's shot block, so one penalty now both ways. Yeah. Both in the same drive. 15-yard yes. penalty, it'll be third down and 23. So third down 23, I'm sorry. So that's uh, that actually third and 23. So third and long for Belchertown here coming up. Legal chop block was made. Bad, bad, bad. Slant, slant, they go to the quarterback. He's going deep, and it's going to be an easy. Oh, it looked like it was an interception, but it was not to be. But it's nonetheless, it's a win-win for a Frontier. It'll be a fourth and long coming up, but almost a pick there on the field. Pass was intended for number 82, Matt Saprina. Pass was intended for Max Savina, but uh, Frontier almost had an interception there. Yeah. Really excellent uh, pocket penetration. Yeah. Really got the quarterback flustered. Very nice defensive yeah, very play good. there. Yes, very good pressure. To think what could have been for Frontier could have easily been a pick six yeah. had that been come up with. It definitely would have got close to the to the end zone and a bad punt from from Belchertown. And boy, Frontier's gonna have good field position. Number 10 rowing down the sideline. He looks like he might go all the way, folks. He's down at the 10 to the five. Can he make it in? Touchdown! Frontier with the touchdown on the punt. And again, uh, and Frontier is on the board. They strike first. Yeah, Garrett DeForest dexterity coming out there again. Really. Garrett DeForest with a punt return, yes. And Belcher, uh, Frontier is on the board first after what was a terrible punt from Belcher Town. Absolutely. That didn't have any distance at all. That just landed right in uh, the forest slap, and he gets an easy score. Absolutely. Now let's see what uh, Frontier does here. Are they gonna gonna go for the the two point conversion, or they're just gonna do it? Yeah, we'll see what they do here. Uh, high schools, to, I mean, some high schools don't have a kicker, but uh, so it looks like they are gonna go for the extra point here. Got it anyway. And the extra point is good. Is Very up. nice kick there and by uh, Dylan Appenau. So Rowan Appenau with the kick, and it is 7 nothing Frontier to start the game. Boy, good defense, good pressure to start the game here for Frontier. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was really impressed, um, especially by their, their ability to get inside, really get at the quarterback. It was two plays in a row. Or on the, on the third downs, two third downs in a row. 
Yeah, very good pressure from Frontier on their defense. You're absolutely right. Almost caused an interception. Did we determine who so things are going Frontier's way to start the game. Hey, did we figure out the first the penalty they had to start with not hurting them, but the penalty hurting well, Belchertown. Leads to seven points for Frontier. Yeah, let's see what uh, Belchertown can put together with this drive here. You'll see how Belchertown responds here. Looks like Kyle Daskin is returning for the Orioles. Looks like Kyle Daskin will return. And Dylan Epinel will kick it for Frontier. And there goes, he is tackled at about the 35 yard line, 34. I beg your pardon. Kyle Daskin tackled at about the 34 yard line. Or 35 actually, but uh, so it'll be first down for uh, Belcher Town, about the 35. You saw that kickoff by Appenel, there was almost no spin on that ball. Yeah, just yeah, through the air. Just completely straight up and down. Yeah, just a kind of a flat kick, but, uh, but good enough. Very nice return there by Belchertown. 4.32 left in the first quarter. We'll take a quick break here and we'll be back with more. You're listening to the Frontier and Belchertown on the FCAT. And we are back once again here on the FCAT. John Meisner, Joe Thompson here with you. The ball was carried there to start for Belcher Town. DeForest with the tackle once again, so pickup of two that time. And DeForest really putting together a really excellent uh, defensive quarter. Yeah, DeForest is versatile. He can play both offense and defense. Off to a good start here in this one. Second and eight for Belcher Town at the 38. Boot, 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 boot! Containment! And number 11 trying to get to the outside, but he is tackled. Looked like a loss there for yards. Ball carried by number 11, Cam Otto. Cam Otto carried it, but it's only got, to, no, he lost a yard. You're right, Joe. He actually lost one yard on that play. Loss of it. Very, very good defense here by Frontier. So it'll be third and nine for Belcher Town. A three and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Here we go, third and long for Belcher Town. On the 36. He's throwing, and the pass is incomplete that time. It's a tenant for number 20 of Belcher Town. That looked like a real nice swat there by Alec Kirkendall out on the field. Yes, very nice uh, defense. Really just locking down this Belcher Town offense. They're, they're not going anywhere. You're right, they're not going anywhere. That's absolutely right. So it'll be fourth and down. Belcher Town will be, have to, will be forced to have to punt. Seems that way. Yeah, Belcher Town doesn't have a lot of first downs in this game. Uh, Frontier started off very nicely on defense. Yeah, the only first down that I can recall Belcher Town getting was off a penalty. That's right. I think you're right about that. That was the only first down of the penalty. And a much better punt that time for Belcher Town. Yes. Number two, McMillan, receives the punt. Uh, so we'll be backed up at about the 20, I think. So Frontier will start it out from their own 20-yard line this time. 3.04 left in the first quarter here on the FCAT. Uh, let's see if Frontier can put together another score here before the end of the first quarter. That would really put them in a power position. Absolutely. We'll give them some momentum going into the second quarter because it's been all Frontier to start the game. They uh, received a very uh, easy punt. <laughs> the punt return for a touchdown. First and 10 at the 20. And he's trying to get... Uh, up the field, the ball's loose, it looked like the ball came out on the carry. Who has possession? We'll find right out right now. And it is... Gain of eight on the play. Uh, there was a gain on the play, sorry. It looked like there was a fumble there. For a second they thought the ball came out, but it did not. It was a gain of eight yards on the run. And good pressure that time for Belcher Town. Looks like we, uh, and, uh, we got uh, first down there, Frontier. Smasky got tackled on that. 
but enough for a first down. Tyler Rarity with a good tackle that time. Seems like Samaski's really good at getting them the first downs that they need. Really good at putting his shoulder down and getting through defenders. Absolutely. They go on the ground again. And uh, McMillan is tackled. With just under two minutes to go in the first quarter. So pick up a five that time for Frontier. It'll be second and five. With the time uh, ticking down here in the first quarter. Second and five for Frontier. They give it off again to McMillan. Oh, wow. McMillan gets up the field nicely. He really dragged that run out. Yeah, he did. Seemed like he was getting started to take down about five yards before he actually went down. Yeah, McMillan is hard to take down. You're absolutely right, but a first down gain that time for Frontier. Tyra Larity with the tackle for Belchertown, but a first down for, Bel uh, for uh, Frontier. And a timeout as we call. We'll take one too here. You're listening to Franklin County Football on the FCAT. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back here on the FCAT. Uh, John Meiser and Joe Thompson with you here. 124 left in the first quarter. Uh, before, during that last break, I got word that uh, there was not a fumble on the play. I was mistaken. It, uh, they, they did lose the ball, Frontier, but uh, he was uh, down by contact before the ball came out. So Frontier maintains possession here as uh, they have uh, first down and 10 here. And, uh, Boy, McMillan's got a, off to, been off to a nice start here, Joe. He's been uh, really uh, very hard to tackle. <laughs> Absolutely. He's got, got very many yards, putting together an excellent running game. Yeah, I don't know how many rushing yards he has, but he's been piling them up pretty quickly here. And we are down to our final minute of the first quarter here with a four-yard pickup that time. And a, and a flag is thrown. Let's see what the call here is. Didn't see anything against uh, Frontier, unless I'm mistaken. But uh, good, good, good. It looks like it's going Frontier's way. At least uh, the Belchertown players are backing up. Penalty is against Belchertown offside. So There's an offside against Belchertown. Second down and one. So it gives uh, Frontier five free yards. They're now second and one instead of second and six. Well, I hate those mental mistakes when an offside happens. <laughs> they give it to uh, number 19, uh, Josh Samaski, and he gets the first down. Number 19, Josh Samaski, tripped up by number one, 30 seconds Cal left in the first. They yeah, were down to only 30 seconds. Pick up of two yards, it'll be a They only needed uh, one, and they got two yards on the play from Samaski. The ball's at the 43-yard line as the clock is ticking away. Only 20 seconds left in the first quarter with Frontier up 7-0. I wonder if uh, Frontier's going to try to get within field goal range here and call a timeout, or maybe they're going to go for the pass play, stop the clock automatically. Well, it'll carry over into the second quarter regardless because uh, they're going the same way. We're only down to five seconds here. They're taking their time. Let's see if they get within field goal range, see if they get to snap the ball off before time runs out, and they do not. So we are out of time for the first quarter. Frontier leads 7 nothing here from Belchertown Community Field. We'll take another break here on the FCAT. Welcome back. We are back to start the second quarter here on the FCAT. John Meiser and Joe Thompson here with you as we start the second quarter play. Frontier is up 7-0 against the Belcher Town Orioles. And uh, as we start the second half here, Frontier still has possession. They are within field goal range, but decided to take it into the second quarter. There's a hole, there's a hole, there's a hole. Very nice run there. And a good run by Frontier. Well, he won't go down easy. Oh, the ball came out, but was he down first? Looks like a recovery by Frontier either way. Uh, uh, yeah, Frontier recovered it even if uh, he was down, so I don't think it's going to matter. I think he might have been down by contact first. So the ball came out after he was down, so Frontier maintains possession here, but a great run that time again oh, yeah. for Frontier. Fantastic. Well, Frontier's giving their teammates a couple of heart attacks. They're not holding on to the football, but luckily they went down first before the ball came out. Yeah, a 33-yard run there. 33-yard uh, run. The ball's at the 24-yard line this time. Another run for Frontier. Uh, that was, I believe, Sebastian. 
Yeah, it looks like Samaski again was the one that carried it. I think you're right. Ball carried by number 19, Josh Samaski. Yep. Tackled by number 54, Ben Gatesman. Ben Gatesman with the tackle that time for Belchertown. Down and five. It'll be second and five for Frontier. They're within the red zone at the 19-yard line now. Forrest is running it himself. And uh, is there another fumble? A fumble for Frontier. Belchertown takes possession. Oh, a costly turnover. Looked like Frontier was about to get in, but uh, it's not the case. That's really how the momentum can be reversed in a game like this. Oh, just a killer for Frontier. Looked like they were about to get at least a field goal or a touchdown out of it, but it's not the case. The ball is lost at the 15-yard line, and Belchertown will take over. My goodness. Let's see if Belchertown can finally put some yards together in this offense here. Yeah, boy, just a gift for Belchertown. We'll see if they take advantage here, Joe. Yeah, it's uh, first and 10 from the 15 here. Uh, well, if there was anything Belchertown needed, it was they needed something to go their way. We'll see if they take advantage of it here. And on first down, there was a tackle made. Number one gets Cal Baskin carried that time. And it looks like a gain of nine on the play for Baskin. Gain of nine on the play. Second down and one. So second and one coming up for Belchertown. Yeah. Ask him with a gain of nine. And we'll take a break here on the FCAT. The As there's a timeout on the field, we'll take one two here on the FCAT. We'll be right back after this. Located in the east corner of the field. Thank you. And we are back here on the FCAT. 10.28 left in the second quarter. John Meisner and Joe Thompson with here. It looks like an injury timeout was taken for Frontier. It looked like DeForest went down with, uh, I couldn't tell what it was exactly, but uh, he is uh, being helped off the field. Uh, did you see what happened there, Joe? I didn't see exactly where he hurt himself. I believe it is his arm. It seems as he is holding his left arm injury. I think he has had a previous left arm injury that might be acting up. Middle, middle. Mm. So it looks like a left arm injury. We'll keep our eye on that in the forest. As he, that is, if that is the case, that is a costly blow for Frontier. Absolutely. He, yeah, they can't uh, survive without him, having made the playoffs the last five years in a row. If they're going to make it six, they're going to need him. <laughs> so we'll see how that uh, shakes out for Frontier as the game goes on here. But a six-yard pickup uh, looks like that time for Belchertown. It'll be third and four from the 21. Loss of three on the play, third down and four. And loss of three, I believe actually. So we get backed up. Third and four for Belchertown. Outside, outside, outside. And it looks like they go to the outside. Nice job. And a tackle is made. Ball carry by number two, Sam Winston. Sam Back Winston gets tackled Josh by Josh Samaski, and it is enough for a first down, it looks first like. Down. So, so big third down conversion from Belchertown. It looked like Frontier was going to stuff him. Yeah, it seems that Frontier's done a really good job on defense there. I believe that's one of the first uh, first downs that first Belchertown's down got. The yeah, only the second or third first down for Belchertown. Frontier's defense has come to play this afternoon, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm just, just looking at uh, the force on the bench here. He looks like he's still writhing in a lot of pain here. I don't think he's going to come back, it looks like, in all likelihood. And a tackle is made, and a flag is thrown on the field. Hey. See what yeah, this is. Ball was carried by number 16, Owen Sedlak. Tackled by number 16. Owen Sedlak with the carry. Yeah. There is a flag on the play. Oh. It might be in favor of Belchertown here. I saw the referee pointing down the field. Looks like it'll be against Belchertown then. Penalty was against Frontier. It's against Frontier. And it'll be a 15 yard penalty. And that will be a first down, Belchertown. Not, not, not sure exactly what the penalty was for, but it's a 15 yard penalty against Frontier. So Frontier, uh, Belchertown's up to the 39 yard line. Did you see what happened there, Joe? I didn't see a, a foul happen, but. Uh, uh, it seemed like some unnecessary contact took place, but I was not sure. Okay, so some unnecessary okay, contact. Winston. Winston with the carry that time for Frontier, and a, and a gain of about four or five or uh, 
Or how many yards is that? Gain, gain a seven on the play, sorry. Seven on the play, <laughs> second down and three. So second and three coming up for Belchertown. Gain a seven on the play up to close to midfield at the 47 yard line. Just under eight minutes to go in the second quarter. Second and three for Belchertown. And they go on the ground this time, and it looks like enough for a first down there as they get to about midfield. Ball catch by number 11, Cameron Otto. Otto with the carry that time for Belchertown. Yeah, quarterback taking himself. Game about eight. Ball is at Again the with the, the, the necessity for dexterous quarterbacks. Six yard line. First down. So Belcher Town is past midfield into frontier territory. Looks like a gain of about seven on the play up to the 46 yard line. Frontier is uh, trying to stop him again. Belcher Town desperate to get on the board here before halftime as nothing has really gone their way here. So number one for Belcher Town gets tackled. Now Baskin got to the outside, but got tackled. And yeah, diving with the tackle for Frontier. Pick up of eight on the and play. a pickup of eight yards on Second the play. Down and two. Yeah, Deskin's really been their first option here, it seems like, on offense. Ball is on the Frontier, 38 yards. Yeah, Deskin's got 23 uh, rushing yards here in the first half. Winston for Frontier is 12. Second down. Come on, come on. And they stopped him. Right after the, the ball was snapped, I'll see if they got a first down out of this. I couldn't tell. They got either one or two on that. Seems like some Frontier players got in there. Ball Defensive lineman did the 16, job. Owen Sedlow. And it looks like a gain of one on the play. So third and one that coming up for Belchertown. A big third down for Belchertown here in the first half. You think they'll go for it on fourth down, Joe, if they don't get it? You know, at this point... Um, I'm not really sure. Before I would have said, told you definitely not, but maybe they just really need some sort of spark in their offense. I mean, they definitely need a spark in their offense. Third down for Belchertown. And he's got oh, enough wow. for a first down. Oh, wow. He's going up to the 10 and the 5, and it'll be a touchdown for Belchertown. A big third down conversion, and they don't just get a first down out of it. Belchertown gets a touchdown. So, so number one for Belchertown. And again, Dascom coming up huge. Dascom with a big third down, and it's not just a first down. They go all the way for a touchdown on a big gain for Belchertown, boy, and a chance to tie it up here with what looks like will be an extra point coming. Oh, they are going for two. I'm sorry. It is a two-point conversion. Let's see. This is for the lead, and it is good. So... Belchertown with a big touchdown with about 541 left in the second quarter. Belchertown takes an 8-7 to seven lead. Daskam coming up huge on that drive, putting together about 70 yards and a touchdown as well as the two-point conversion. And it looks like I'm just getting word that uh, DeForest is coming out of the game. Uh, just too serious of a left arm injury. So... Couple losses there for Frontier. They lost the lead and they lost a player, boy. It's gonna be tough how they make adjustments in the second half. Yeah, let's, uh, let's see how they recover from, from the absence of the forest. So Belchertown with a 8-7 lead. Uh, On to do the kicking for Belchertown, number 20, Hunter Klingensmith. Hunter Klingensmith will punt back to Frontier. Number two, Riarchus McMillan. Uh, looks like so McMillan will receive the punt for Frontier. 541 left in the first half here on the FCAT. And the punt is up. McMillan drops it but picks it up. And he is tackled at about the 25, 26 yard line. Not the, McMillan. Yeah, not the cleanest catch in the world, but uh, but good enough to get a few yards on the play, I guess. So. Hey, at least he picked it back up, right? Francisco yes, they did. Yes. 
So we are at the 29 yard line. First and 10 for Frontier this time. Down by one with 534 left in the second quarter. And it looks like a timeout is being called. We'll take one two here on the FCAT. 534 left in the second quarter. You're listening to FCAT Frontier Regional Sports right here. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the FCAT. John Meisner and Joe Thompson here with you. It is 534 left in the second quarter. Orioles having just scored a touchdown, gotten a two-point conversion. They're up eight to seven. And the big story of the first half here, Garrett DeForest for uh, Frontier has been taken out of this game. And it looks like they have brought in a substitute. So we were mentioning that during that time out there. Yeah, he's a, he's a friend of mine, Sam Schreiber, yeah. sophomore year. So Sam Schreiber, the sophomore, coming in to replace DeForest there, uh, running back. Uh, and uh, yeah, how good is he uh, there, Joe? Do you, do you know anything about him? I'm not entirely sure. I know he's uh, the starting quarterback for Junior University football. Oh, well, it's a big jump from JV to the high school level, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, no. And they have stuffed uh, Frontier that time. Alec Kirkendall for a yeah. loss of about five or so. Yeah, Kirkendall lost about five yards on the play. Alec Kirkendall, the junior for Frontier, number 45. So a loss of five. So Belchertown's got some momentum going. They have the lead. They have forced uh, Frontier into a critical third down here as we come close to, we're winding down toward the end of the first half. And it really circles back to that fumble play. You know, Frontier really just lost their momentum. Forrest got injured. Everything starts from that point. And Kirkendall with the carry that time on a third down. And it's enough for a first down. Nice. Number 80, Brian Worrell with the tackle for Belchertown. The first down for Frontier. Ball is at the Red Hawk 40-yard line. And the ball's at the 40 now for Frontier. Get him, get him. Looks like Samaski's taking it. Oh. Samaski with the carry. And uh, I saw Belchertown defense reach in for the ball there. Samaski really just held on to that thing. Ball carried by number 19, Josh Samaski. Yeah, Samaski really had to hang on. You're right. They were really trying to fight for that football, but uh, Samaski wasn't giving it up easily. Pick up two yards that time. So it'll be second eight. Frontier. And a nice run by Josh Samaski. They are into Belchertown territory now. Big pickup that time on the play. It'll be a first down at the 42 of Belchertown. So Josh Samaski stepping up nicely here. It's like a gain of about 15 that time. So ball's at the 48. Samaski again carries it. Tries to get to the outside, and he is tackled on the play. Not as much of a game that time. And it'll be second down and five. So he'll pick up a five yards for Samaski. Three minutes remaining in the first half. Yeah, I think it's really going to be about the young guys for Frontier here. Both uh, Samaski and Schreiber are sophomores. Yeah, Junior Varsity is going to have to stack up uh, here with a big costly injury to DeForest like we talked about. Oh, no, it looks like Kirkendall's down. And it looks like another injury. Herkendall might be hurt here. He's not getting up easily. Oh no, he's all right. He's all right now. Uh, well, let's see, he's, he's on his feet. He's jogging it in. Timeout. So a timeout is taken here by Frontier, and we'll take another timeout here ourselves. 2.47 left in the first half. Belchertown up eight to seven here on the FCAT. We are back here on the FCAT. John Miser and Joe Thompson here with you. 2.47 remaining in the second quarter with Belchertown up 8-7. Frontier had the momentum early having scored first, but Belchertown has the next eight points in a row. Big story of the first half. Garrett DeForest for Frontier has left the game with a left arm injury, and, uh, and uh, Josh Smasky from the Junior Varsity team, the 10th grader, has taken over. And it looked like for a moment he might have been hurt with a concussion there, Joe, but it looks like he's okay. Yeah. And a flag is thrown on the play, but, but like I was saying, you know, that, I mean, concussions are so serious these days, you know, you, you always got to be careful with this, very, very sensitive. Yeah, especially in football, you know, you're just bashing at each other. False start. Marines. Frontier. False start against Frontier, so a loss of five yards, it'll be third and ten. Loss just really aren't going Frontier's way here in the second quarter. 
Yeah, it's been a tale of two quarters, that's for sure. Frontier had all the momentum going in the first half, but ever since the forest went down, it looks like it's everything shifted the front, uh, Belchertown's way. Absolutely. Go defense! Seems like it's a huge part of the team, offense and defense. Third and 10 for Frontier. And they go in the air, and uh, boy, just a bad sideways pass. It is incomplete. Pass is incomplete. Not sure what he's doing there. Way overthrew the receiver by quite a bit there. So Frontier will have to punt. Fourth down and 10. This isn't really helping them at all. <laughs> we have to give it right back to Belchertown. Uh, 2.41 left in the second quarter. And it's fourth and 10 for Frontier. Number one, Cal Baskin. And they will punt it away. Kicking number 57, Dylan Appenell. So Dylan Appenell to punt. Ooh. Receives a bad snap. And a sort of a weak punt that time from uh, Appenell and is picked up by uh, by Smasky. So not the greatest punt in the world from Frontier, but uh, they do get it into the other side of the field to, to about the 48-yard line for, for the Orioles. I think that was a good recovery there by Appenel after the, the bad long snap. Yeah, bad snap and a bad kick, but a decent return at least. At least a... So it'll be first down from the 36 of Belchertown, about two and a half minutes to go. They give it off to number two, and uh, by number two, Sam Winston. Sam Winston is tackled for Belchertown from. Uh, Tackle by number 85, Donovan Hoffman. Looks like about Donovan a four-yard gain there. Yes, four-yard gain indeed. It'll be second and six coming up. Second down and six. I haven't seen too much from Donovan Hoffman so far in the first half, but he makes a tackle that time. He's one of the captains of Frontier. Seems like he's uh, he's doing the get the job done quietly here. Yeah, kind of kind of a quiet leader. I agree with you there. And another tackle is made on second and six. Ball well handed again to number two, Sam Winston. Once like again, first tackled down. by number 85, Donovan Hoffman. So Sam Winston with a per cover on first down. Yeah, Sam Winston's probably been one of the Ball keys of the first Belcher half here for Belchertown. It's, it's one of the biggest reasons they have a one-point lead. Yeah, him and Daskin combined here just in the second quarter, 93 yards. Impressive for, uh, for the Orioles, 93 yards. Rushing in the first half of the game. We're down to about a minute and a half in the first half here. Ball's at the 46 for the Orioles. Oh! And a fumble on the field. Oh, yeah. Who's going to get it? Fumble on the play. Let's see who has possession. There's a big pile on underneath. And Frontier field. recovers the fumble. There oh, my go. goodness. <laughs> see that? So despite things not going Frontier's way, a costly fumble for the Orioles, and the, let's see if the Red Hawks take advantage of it here yeah. with 1.15 left in the second quarter. We'll see if they score here before the end of the half. Just a huge fumble recovery there by, I think, Alec Kirkendall. He's really just putting his body on the line to get in the, get yeah, the way of that ball. Yeah, Kirkendall had the fumble, you're right, and uh, haven't been a whole lot of turnovers here in the first half, but uh, one that's, well, this may be costly here for the Orioles. They've just took the lead. Up one point. Frontier chance to get at least within field goal range. We have a whistle here. And I don't see a flag on the play. Is there a timeout called? There was a flag on the play. Is there a flag? Well, apparently there is a flag. I don't see the flag, but apparently there was one thrown. Surprised all of us here. And it is a false start against Frontier. No, that's unfortunate. It'll bring up a first down and 15. Only a five-yard loss. Frontier, Frontier. So only a five-yard yard loss on a false start for Frontier, but you need as many yards as you can get with only about 113 left in the quarter. Absolutely. So they give it off to, uh, looks like. Uh, Paul Carey by number 45, Alec Kirkendall. Kirkendall, number 45 with the 
The carry. It's only got two yards back on that five yard loss. It'll be second and 13 at 50. Gain of two, second down and 13. And the clock is ticking down here in the first half. Yeah, we'll see if Frontier wants to use a timeout here. We're down to about 45 seconds here. It doesn't look like they are. They're going to try to play this out. Frontier also may be out of timeouts. They had to use a couple though, for DeForest. Oh, That's no. true. And it looks like another uh, fumble. It's <laughs> getting sloppy here in the last Fumbling minute. It really is. Thank goodness. <laughs> I think both teams are going to need this halftime. Oh, yeah. <laughs> getting Futterfingers yeah. here in the last seconds. Get their mind right. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> yeah, no timeouts being called here. We're down about 15 seconds here. And uh, coaching staff deciding. Looks as though they're going to try to run it out here. So it looks like they're just going to run out the clock here as we as approach halftime here at Belcher Town Community Field. That's the end of your first half. Orioles are up 8-7. to seven. We will be back after this timeout with halftime from Belcher Town Community Field. You're watching Frontier Football on the FCAD. We'll be back in the second half here after these messages. Welcome back, everyone. We are ready to start the second half of our game here this afternoon between the Belchertown Orioles and the Frontier Red Hawks. So it's Belchertown having an 8-7 lead as we start the second half. Kind of a lower scoring game here, but uh, it's been an interesting first half. Uh, momentum shifted both ways for Frontier and uh, for Belchertown. We got news during halftime that Garrett DeForest from Frontier will be returning despite a left arm injury, and uh, the trainers apparently don't want him sitting out. So, boy, that shows you a lot of confidence and a lot of toughness from DeForest to be able to come back, Joe. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think he knows how essential he is to the success of this team. And, uh, I mean, it's, it's evident in, in what happened when he wasn't in the game. Yeah. No question about that. Uh, yeah, as soon as DeForest left, uh, you know, front uh, Belchertown scored a touchdown. So, uh, yeah, he is very valuable, that's for sure. <laughs> so, one point difference here. So we got a couple minutes to go here before the uh, second half starts. It's funny, the clock had run out. I thought we were about to start, but we still got <laughs> a couple minutes yeah. to go here, actually. But, uh, but, uh, they interesting how uh, the first half. So, give me your thoughts on the first half. Well, what did you take away from it? Well, I saw a lot of uh, a lot of two, well, two or three top-heavy runners on each side, really. From Frontier, there's obviously Eda McMillan and Garrett DeForest. Um, DeForest had a really nice interception return. I uh, don't know, short punt return. Mm -hmm. They just took all the way for the touchdown. And then uh, across the board on Belcher Town, there's Mr. Daskum, who. 70 yards, 70 rushing yards in the second quarter alone, a touchdown and the two-point conversion. Um, so that's that's a very impressive feat by him. So clearly there's, uh, there's, there's people on both teams that can really um, propel their team to victory. Yeah, Daskam, like you said, with 70 yards in one quarter alone, to think if he had uh, any yards in the first quarter, <laughs> it might have, even, yeah, it might have made even more of a difference. But uh, no, you're absolutely right. Uh, yeah, good tight, low-scoring game to start the season. That's for sure. It's be exciting uh, for what's to come. Uh, if that's any any indication, I guess. But uh, we have Belcher Town with a one-point lead, like I said. Uh, but uh, but yeah, still uh, we've been <laughs> we've been getting uh, mixed um, signals as far as to what to call number uh, two for Frontier. We he prefers to be called Edo McMill, and he doesn't like his name apparently. So we'll call him Edo, as in a mojito, but I don't think he's had one. <laughs> Uh, so we'll call him Edo from here on out. So, And it doesn't look like DeForest is in the game. Maybe he's only going to be playing on offense for them. Okay, we'll look out for that. So he'll only be on offense, uh, DeForest. Is. I think they just want to slowly get him back in the game here. I think that's probably all it is. They don't want to risk another injury. Absolutely. Very smart. So we are underway to start the second half here from Belchertown Community Field as uh, Belchertown is receiving the punt here to start the second half as they defer to the beginning of the game. And they got them all tied up here. And a nice tackle. Very impressive how uh, how long he was able to stay up there even with like 10 guys on him. Yeah, he stayed on his feet for a few seconds there. He doesn't go down easy. Probably too much time in the weight room. <laughs> So the ball is brought out to the 27-yard line this, uh, to start the second half for Belchertown. Belchertown will start first and 10 from their own 27-yard line. 
Yeah, we'll, we'll keep our eyes peeled out for DeForest, like you said, only starting out on, uh, on offense. Uh, so we won't see him on this first series, but we'll see him when Frontier gets their ball to start the, the half. First of 10. There he goes, and a... Uh, and Kyle Bascom with the run, and he is tackled and tripped up. Tripped up by Ethan. And uh, again, it's, it's Bascom coming up big for Belchertown. Just continues to pound the ball. Yeah, Ethan Michon with the tackle at times. <coughs> so second and one for Belchertown. Michon with the tackle for Frontier. Second and one for Belchertown. Orioles with the ball at their own 36. And they go on the ground. And I don't, not sure if he got, he did get a first down on there. It looks like a cup game about two or three. Yeah, and that's been the two-headed monster of their running game. It's been Daskam and Winston just taking turns, taking care of the ball. Daskam, Daskam and Winston. Sounds like a new sitcom starting. <laughs> yeah, so gain of three on the ground for um, for Belchertown. Yeah, that's been the story of the first half plus here. It's uh, Yeah, Belchertown's got a nice running game. Yeah, and uh, Frontier, Frontier was really able to get their running game going when DeForest was in the game, but it has not been presenting itself very much recently. Of course. So it looks like they go on the ground again. And uh, it's like a big old group tackle. And it looks like a gain of about two, or three actually. It's hard to tell who carried that. It looks like there was a big pile up front, but uh, we'll find out in a second here. Second down in six. Second down and six coming up. It was actually a gain of four. It was three initially, but it was a gain of four. Not sure who actually carried it that time for Pelser Town. It was a big swarm of Frontier players, but nonetheless, they gained four on the play. Oh, and here's Winston again. Winston. And he's trying to get tackled, and uh, boy, he didn't go down easy that time. Wow. Winston, uh, tough to tackle. Yeah. It's only a gain of four yards, but man, that's one of the most impressive four-yard gains I've ever seen. Yeah, that I know. He looked impressive just standing up before he got tackled. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Third down and two. So another four-yard pickup. Yep, It'll be third and two, or five-yard pickup actually. Looks like it's actually third and one. Third and one from the 45 for the Orioles. And it looks like enough for a first down. Again, another third down conversion for the Orioles. Frontier's really got to start stepping up their defense here if they want to make a difference. Yeah, Frontier a little slow to on their defense to start the second half. Uh, the nose of the ball rests directly on the 50-yard line. And they are at exactly the 50-yard line. Belcher Town is at midfield. So, here we go once again. First down for the 50. Belcher Town controlling the running game to start the second half. They'll put down a lot of clock here. They go on the ground again. And a loss of yards on the play. They push back. There, there Number go. one for Belcher Town. I believe that was Ian Spirits broke through the line. Yeah, Ian Spirits with the tackle. Classmate of mine, very impressive, very impressive from the sophomore. Yeah. Is he good as, in school as well as he is on the field? <laughs> Uh, I mean, he must be if he's on the field. <laughs> yeah, 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 he's a very good student. Okay, good. We won't talk smack about his grades. We'll keep that private for me. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, all the kids are doing well in school. They wouldn't be unless they, they, were, they were doing well in their class. Stay in school, kids, as they say. Absolutely. Yeah. Second and 12 now for Belcher Town. Loss of two, though, actually. Ooh, they're, going with they're, it. they're going in the air, and it passes incomplete. Looks like pass, pass went to nobody that time. Wildly overthrown. Perhaps it was a bit of an intentional overthrow there. Yeah, he, I, I think it might have been just some pressure because that was not targeting anybody. Probably just uh, had nowhere to throw. Didn't want to just uh, give it to the other team. Yeah, probably safer that way. So third and long coming up for Belchertown. 
they maintain a one point lead here. And Frontier's defense stepped up on those last two possessions. Third and 12. Let's see if Frontier can finally get a third down stop here. Let's see if they do here. Oh, he's taking Come up, Johnny. it. Come up. Running. Running is number 11, and he is tackled by two or three Frontier players. That was uh, Jack Vasilio and Josh Damaski right there. Just get right to the ball. Good tackle by Jack Vasilio. So fourth down and long coming up for Belchertown. Great tackle by Jack Vasilio for Frontier. Two. That's the kind of defense that uh, Frontier's going to need throughout the, throughout the course of the rest of the game. Absolutely. So Frontier will, or excuse me, Belchertown will punt it to Frontier. It's a pretty nice punt right there. And we'll see where this ball spotted. It looks like it's about the 12 or 13 yard line, close to the 15. So the refs will spot the ball. We're waiting for an official spot. Couldn't tell exactly where it landed, but somewhere between the 15 and 20. We're trying to make sure here. So it's spotted at the 18-yard line. Good punt from uh, Belchertown. Yeah, it's a very, very long punt. So the Red Hawks will start from their own 18. There you go. And a running play this time. I believe that was... Uh, yeah, it was... Edo McMillan. So Edo McMillan with the run. He's been their go-to guy here down the stretch after DeForest went out. He really has been. You're absolutely right. Yeah, without him, they'd be they could be behind eight nothing. <laughs> the way this game is going. So gain of six for McMillan. Second to four. Going to Samaski. And Josh Samaski with the run. He is tackled, but enough for a first down. Tackle number 20, Hunter Klingensmith. Hunter Klingensmith with a tackle for the Orioles. About a 10 yard gain there, I'd say. Looks like about 10 yards, yeah. Pick up of about 10 yards, it'll be a first down for Frontier. So pick up of 10 for Frontier, it'll be a first and 10 at the 25. And it looks like a false start against the Red Hawks. Uh, on the play, false start, Frontier. Five yard penalty, it'll bring up a first down and 15. Yeah, Frontier wants to get it back into this game. They really got to stop, you know, getting flags. Yeah, not too many flags in the first half, but still costly ones when they were. One of them led to a score, so. Yeah. So it's now first and 15 for the Red Hawks. Like you said, they want to get back in this game. There can't be any more penalties. Oh, and, no. and speaking of penalties, there's another one. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Frontier's shooting themselves in the foot right now. <laughs> Back-to-back -back false starts for Frontier. What has gotten into them, Joe? <laughs> um, I'm not sure, John. I think they're really suffering here. Uh, apparently yeah. they didn't really get their heads together during halftime. Uh, no, clearly not. <laughs> they, they probably spent they too much. Fumbled it yet. They haven't fumbled, but still, I mean, penalties are just as bad as turnovers. So it's first and 20. They get about five yards back on that, on the run. There's one false start gone away. Tackle by number 77, yeah. Curtis Walter. Tackle by Curtis Walter for the Orioles. Pick up a five on the play, second down and 15. So what really should be second and five is second and 15 <laughs> uh, because of the penalties. Let's see what Frontier does here. Five minutes remaining here in the second quarter. Second and 15 on the 28 for Frontier. Sloppy snap. They go in the air, and it is caught. No, it is not caught. I'm sorry. Incomplete to Josh Samaski. Boy, it looked like he had it for a second. I thought he made the catch, but he did not. That was a good throw there by Sam Schreiber. It's just a Very nice throw by Sam Schreiber, but incomplete to Josh Samaski. Boy, that's one he's probably kicking himself. He probably wishes he should have had that one. So third and 15 coming up for the Red Hawks. See if they go back to the passing play again on third down. Doesn't look like they will. No, they're going to go on the ground. Oh, wow. Trick play there. 
A little trick play, but not enough for a first down. It's they're going to have to punt it away, the Red Hawks. It'll be fourth down and long coming up. Ball carried by number 19, Josh Sanaski. Tackle by number two, Cal Baskin. So Cal Baskin with a tackle. Cal Baskin. On tackle on number 19, Smasky. Again, Daskin coming up big on both sides of the ball. Yeah, like you said earlier, Joe, he had 70 yards in the second quarter alone. He's just come up big on the tackles. So he is uh, definitely the not one-dimensional. Wow. And an interesting kind of pun on fourth down. <laughs> it looked like they were trying to go for a trick play there. I'm not sure what they were doing. Who's Daskin on the return? Daskin on the return, and a flag is thrown. On uh, boy, look like a. I don't. I've never seen a punt like that before. Look, he was about to throw and then kicked it. What a. That was a kind of a creative little trick play there. <laughs> incredible mobility by Apino on that play. He managed to shed the tackle and punt it anyway. Yeah, to be able to adjust from throwing to kicking, I mean, that is very. T I don't know if they teach it, <laughs> but uh, boy, that was very impressive. And it looks like a block in the back was called on Belcher Town, so that will back him up. But. Uh, Boy, I, that's something you see on like Sports Center in the top ten. Of yeah. of, of, to go from passing to kicking in one motion, that was smooth. <laughs> yeah, I think what happened was uh, he was going to punt, and then he saw defenders on him, so he he looked for the throw, and he realized uh, he just had to kick it. Yeah, I think you're right about that. He was trying to go for it on fourth down and changed his mind at the last second, so really he had to think on the fly. So good pressure caused the punt outside, outside, outside. To, to be caused, and the uh, first down for. Belcher Town, they're going on the running game. And Daskin really just frontier poison here tonight. Frontier defense. Yeah, that's for sure. The Frontier's defense definitely has kept them in this game. And a pickup of nine yards on the play for nine Orioles. On the play. Second down and one. Second and one for the Orioles. About three and a half minutes to go here. And with some pressure, and the ball comes loose. Who has the ball? And Frontier's got it. Oh my goodness, what a play by Josh Samaski. And Jack Vasilio poked the ball loose. That was incredible. What a play by Josh Samaski. Comes up with the fumble after some t initial pressure on the quarterback from Frontier. And F Frontier is going to get the ball with 3.22 left in the third quarter with a chance to take the lead. Yeah, and you saw you saw Vasilio just tracking that quarterback down. Absolutely. Vasilio with tremendous pressure. Yeah. I mean, even if they didn't come up with a fumble, they would have had a, probably a third and long out of that. So but they get even better. They get the bonus of a turnover. First and now we're from the line. very close to the end zone. Let's see if, see if they can put together a, a score here. Yeah, let's see if they do. The ball spotted at the 30 on the turnover. So it'll be first down for Frontier at the 30. We'll see what they do here. 3.22 left in the quarter. Big turnover for Belchertown. Can they take advantage of it? We'll find out. Ball carry by number 45, Alec Kirkendall. Alec Kirkendall with the carry. And a pickup of about one or two yards, I think. Yeah, Kirkendall is really their, uh, their guy to get through crowds. Yes. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So pick up of two for Mr. Kirkendall. They go to McMillan. They go to McMillan this time, and he is tackled. Ball carry by number two, Edo McMillan. Go tackled by number eight. McMillan clearly frustrated on the play. Yes. A little bit of frustration setting in. But a big third down coming up for Frontier. It'll be third and four. Third down and four. From the 24-yard line. If they want to score here, they have to convert on third down. So third and four for the Red Hawks. Oh, wow. And McMillan. Oh, goes. McMillan is got a first down and got some more yards after that. Didn't quite get it to the end zone, but got very close. There he goes. And it looks like it might be first and goal coming up for the Red Hawks. It is first and goal for Frontier. So a very nice run from, uh, you know, McMillan. First 
from the Belcher Town seven yard line. So at the seven yard line is the Red Hawks. Yeah, 17 yard pickup there for McMillan. Very nice. A 17 yard pickup and a flag is thrown. The play, ball was carried by number 45, Alec Kirkendale, and another See, flag. Well, that's the play. last thing you want to have happen if you're frontier, if you're just getting into the red zone as a penalty, but. Uh, We'll see what the call is here. Still trying to figure out what the call is here. The ball's at the seven yard line, so. Just under two minutes to go in the third quarter. Referee's having a long talk over this one. <laughs> sorry, 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 folks, I couldn't help but laugh. The public address announcer just said, hurry up, the mosquitoes are coming. That's, that's why we had to move the game back to 4 o'clock today, because there was a mosquito problem here in Belcher Town. <laughs> Everybody's got a sense of humor. <laughs> Two flags on the play. Frontier for a push. So two penalties are being called on the play, a push against Frontier and a hold against Belchertown. So the penalties are going to offset each other, so it doesn't change anything. Things stay the same as they are, so still be uh, first and goal from the seven. And the referee and just said exactly what you said one. there, John. Yes. <laughs> I've, I've watched a few football games. I kind of know how these things work. Yeah. <laughs> So first and seven, so things offset each other, so nothing changes for either team. First and goal from the seven. 145 end counting down in the third quarter. And another penalty is called, boy, both teams getting a little sloppy here at the end of the quarter. And a false start. Penalty on the play. So it'll be first and 12. So this will go against Frontier, so it, uh, it will back him up five yards, so it'll be first and goal from the 12 yard line. First and goal from the 12 yard line. Yeah, you don't usually see a first and goal from outside the 10 unless the penalty's called or you get pushed back. So it'll so be first and goal from the 12 for Frontier. That was the whole backfield. It looked like it was a little late snap. And we'll take a quick break here on. The broadcast, Frontier with a timeout. 142 left in the third quarter as they are gaining ground and getting close to the end zone. 8-7 uh, Belchertown. <laughs> we'll be back here on the FCAT after this. And we are back once again. I and mean, you've joined us at a very important time here in the game. With 142 left in the third quarter, Frontier is pushing for what looks to be the lead after the timeout. And it is first down and 13 after what was a penalty after they got in the red zone. Oh, and they wow. are in for the, looks like they are in for the touchdown. Josh Samaski. Josh Samaski is in for the score and the, Red Hawks have come back to take the lead. Oh no. Someone's down on the floor. And it looks like we have touchdown an injury. And we have an injury so the good news is Frontier gets a touchdown and has a lead, but the bad news is it looks like another injury for Frontier, boy. Seems like um, Frontier's about two yards from the goal, actually. Are they two? Yeah. No touchdown on the play. He reached the two yard line. And it looks like Ethan Russell is down with an injury. So sorry about that, folks. They actually did not get a touchdown. They're two yards out. But more importantly, another injury for Frontier is, uh, oh my goodness, first uh, first to Forest and now this one. This Boy, Frontier's really, <laughs> they're really up against it now. <laughs> and Ethan Russell is down for the Red Hawks. But boy, a big carry there for Josh Samaski. And he is slow to get up. He is hardly even moving when the coach is on the field with the trainers. The 
Everybody's just holding their breath now. All the Frontier players are kneeling. They're trying to bring him to his feet, and he is up. So he's walking off on his own power, Joe, so that's a good sign. He's not, uh, looks like he's not in any serious pain. No. He's got the wind knocked out of him, I think. Yeah, I can, I can relate to that. Yeah. Very painful experience. <laughs> yes, uh, not something you want to go through, but uh, we've all had that happen. Second down and goal from the three-yard line. So second down and goal from the three yard line for Frontier. And they are gonna be stopped just short. Ball carried by number 19, Josh Samaski. Samaski was not able to get in. Got pushed back a few yards. It's now third and six now for the Red Hawks. Clock's ticking. And we are under one minute to go. So third and six. For the Red Hawks, big third down. They give it again to McMillan. Ball handed to number two, Edo McMillan. And he is tackled just short. It'll be fourth and fourth and goal with under 30 seconds left. Let's see what Frontier does here. They're gonna just take the, the secure three points. So it'll be fourth and three. Oh. Gonna bring up fourth down and goal. The clock is ticking. They have they have two timeouts. They're not using them. They want to stop the clock and go for a field goal, but they're down to about six seconds here. So it looks like they'll just carry this over into the fourth quarter. And that is exactly what they will do as time runs out here. So that is the end of the third quarter here from Belchertown. Belchertown leads the Red Hawks 8-7 to seven at the end of the third quarter. We'll be back after these messages with the fourth quarter on the FCAT. Welcome back as we start the fourth quarter here from Belchertown Community Field. He joins us at a pivotal point in the game as Frontier is trying to go for it. It looks like on fourth and three oh, to no. take the lead, and they lost the boat. Oh. It looks like McMillan is trying to get a first down at least, and he doesn't get the first down, and a, and a flag is thrown, a controversial flag, as it looks like uh, the play was down. McMillan was trying to get yardage. Was he down? That's the question. That is the question. So a flag is thrown on a fourth down. So it looks like, boy, this is against Belchertown. That's a bad penalty to take, because it looks like they had him stop short of the first down marker. Yeah, the goal line. Yeah. So we'll see what the referees say here. What are you thinking, John? Well, I'm I'm a little confused here. It looks like the they they threw the flag even though the whistle had gone off. So they're just trying to sort out the confusion here on the field. I think nobody's sure what uh, if this is even going to count the, the penalty or not. Might have been a little after the whistle had sounded from what I'm hearing the flag was thrown. Looks like offsetting penalties are being called. So the offsetting penalties in Belchertown will take over first and ten. So 
So offsetting penalties are called. The first was against Belchertown, but the second was actually against Frontier. So had that second one not occurred, actually Frontier could have got a first down, but it is not the case. It's actually Belchertown that's taking over with possession from their own nine yard line. Boyd. A tough. A lot of new rules this year, Joe. It's kind of hard to install to keep track of all of them. But uh, seems like a really big missed opportunity there by Frontier. Yeah, huge missed opportunity. Boy, Frontier looked like they were about to get a first down on what looked to be a Belchertown uh, hold or some kind of penalty, but uh, the offsetting canceled that, so tough break. Yeah. I'm unsure as to why they didn't go for a field goal on that play, but... Yeah, they were within field goal range, so a questionable decision by their coach, but uh, well, they wanted the, the touchdown, and they did not get it, so Frontier takes over, or excuse me, Belchertown takes over, second and six on the 13. And here goes Daskum. And Daskum with a carry and a big hit on the play. Hit by number 85, Donovan Hoffman. Donovan Hoffman with the tackle. But to be but back to that play at the, the, the fourth the goal there, Joe. I mean, you know, you're taught to play it until the whistle, but you know, I mean, I don't know. What, what were your thoughts on that? Do you, do you think the do you, do you think that was called correctly the offsetting, or do you think one should have been called and not the other? Well, I think um, I think the offset was good. I'm pretty sure McMillan had an altercation with someone after the fact. So yeah, you got to control your emotions. You definitely want to play until the whistle, but you know there's a fine line between that. I think so. Third and four in the 15. And McMillan is trying to go, but he gets tackled by the Red Hawks. Looks like two or three players on the tackle. By number 11, Cam Otto. Cam Otto did not get a, or no, he did get a first down, I'm sorry. First down, Town. So a first down on the pickup by Cam Otto. He's been putting he is up to the 15. The Solid running performance for the quarterback down. position tonight. Yeah, Otto's played well in this one. It's up to the 23 yard line, I beg your pardon. So Otto's played well here, you're absolutely right. From the 23. Give it to Winston. Winston on the carry, and Ooh. Ooh. push him back. So Winston gets Tackle tackled. Number 24, Sam Heber, and number 19, Josh Samaski. Looks like a one yard pickup on the play, perhaps two. Looks like a two yard pickup, it looks like, but. Uh, now yeah, they'll give him, they'll give him three yards on that. <laughs> Is there are nice people here in the booth. <laughs> so three yards on the pickup for Belcher Town. Nine minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. From the 26. Middle, middle, middle. And he's trying to stretch for a yard or two, but uh, was, pet, was tackled. From 85 of the Red Hawks. Uh, Ball carry by number 82, Max Sapria. Max Sapria got tackled. Tackle by number 85, Donovan Hoffman. Donovan Hoffman, one of the captains on the Red Hawks with the tackle. Pick up a four on the play, third down and three. Third and three coming up for Belchertown. And was there a false start on there? It looked like the Premature on the snap, but uh, wow, looks like they missed one there, Joe. I did not see a flag, but it looked like there was a false start. Seems as though they did not get the first. Oh, did they get the first down? Interesting call by the referees. Wow, interest there. I'm not sure I agree with the call, but but they did snap the ball before the uh, the false start happened. So I, I guess it's a first down for Belzer Town, but it looked like it should be a. Five-yard penalty, but not the case. Yeah. <laughs> well, looks like Belchertown got away with a false start there, but nonetheless, they have a first down. Questionable first down. And <laughs> That's it. Nothing really happened in that time on first down. Okay, we've number two, Sam Winston. About seven and a half minutes left in the game. Yes, seven and a half to go. About 7.40 left in the fourth quarter. 
and a loss of three yards on the play. Second and 13 coming up for Belchertown. Jill, if you're Frontier, how do you score here in the fourth quarter if you want to have a chance to take the lead? Because they've been having a hard day. They had their chance a minute ago, and they got stuffed uh, because of the offsetting penalties. Well, I really think McMillan is their best chance to get it down the field, but uh, once they get in close range, I think Kirkendall is their guy. He's been really good at getting through groups of people. This, uh, today. Yes, he has. You're absolutely right about that. See if they and Daskum has, has the ball once more. Daskum uh, again going down through. midfield, and he slips. Oh, he slipped as he got the midfield. Oh. Number one, Cal Daskum, he slips down. Looks like right Spirin's got field. the ball away from him after he slips, but uh, they're calling Gaskin down. Yeah, he was down initially all by himself, but yeah, he, boy, if he didn't slip, he might have got another five or ten yards. That cost him a few yards. Yeah, that was a 19-yard run there. 19-yard run that time. Injury timeout. And we have an injury time on the field, so we will take one two here. 7.05 left to go in the fourth quarter. You're watching Frontier Redhawks football on the FCAT. We'll be right back. Thank you. We want to welcome you back to Belchertown Community Field for the end of this game between the Belchertown Orioles and the Frontier Red Hawks. Uh, we had a very lengthy stoppage. We had a very unfortunate neck injury to one of the Frontier uh, players. As it appears, he got uh, he, as he was getting blocked, he slipped and hurt his neck very, very badly. Uh, the ambulance is just leaving the field here from uh, Belchertown, but uh, Joe, just a very scary sight to see. Nothing you never want to see an ambulance on a no field. No, you don't. No, you don't. And uh, already tough enough as it is, uh, you know, Garrett DeForest suffered a left arm injury, and now a neck injury to one of their other players. So uh, it's uh, it's just tough, you know. Uh, you know, football is a tough sport, and uh, I give a lot of credit to these kids and these coaches for you know going out on the field anyway just to play, but uh, to, to suffer something like that is just devastating. Absolutely, yeah. We've got to come back on here for uh, yeah. the game. Yeah, we had about a, th uh, what happened was the uh, they gave the teams three minutes to practice uh, before they are resuming where we left off here. There was seven minutes, five seconds left in the fourth quarter but after a long stoppage, they gave the teams a few minutes to warm up. So we are just getting back underway right now after a lengthy stoppage with about seven minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Belchertown still has possession of the football as we continue. And a tackle is made. Sam Winston. Sam Winston with a five-yard carry. Donovan Hoffman with the tackle. So many tackles for Hoffman on the night. Second and five now for Belchertown at their own at the 45 yard line. Gets to the outside and a tackle is made by Frontier. Cam Otto tried to get to the outside, but was tackled by at least a couple of Red Hawk players. One yard gain on the play. And a one yard gain on the play is it, yes, third and four. Gain of one on the play, third down and four. You know, we've, we've been a little worried here at the stadium about whether or not we'll get this game in because we have a mosquito problem, like I mentioned earlier, <laughs> here in Belchertown. Uh, you know, it's funny, I was, I was joking around with uh, with the, the crew here during that break that, uh, you know, several years ago, Joe, I don't know if you remember, but a game between the uh, Yankees and the Indians in uh, baseball, there was a, I think there actually was a mosquito or a gnat problem, the job of Chamberlain, and it was a, it was kind of funny, actually. He was trying to pitch with it flying in his face, and they had to keep stopping because of it. But, but it's a little different at the high school level, and as there's a tackle made here, hard tackle at that. And we'll see if he picks up the first down. He does not, it appears. Tackle by number 76, A.J. Mihalak. So he is stopped short. It'll be fourth down and four. So no gain on the play for Baltimore. Uh, I, I, yeah. so, I keep wanting to say Baltimore all day. I'm sorry. I keep saying Oriole and a B. I see, want to, keep wanting to say Baltimore, but no, it's the Belchertown Orioles. And there's no gain on that yeah. play. Very nice tackle by A.J. Mihalak there. He's played well in this. 
and it looks like we will take another timeout. Hopefully this will be a little shorter this time. 4.46 left to go in the fourth quarter. You are watching Red Hawks and the Orioles action on FK. And welcome back once again. We have 4.46 remaining to go in the fourth quarter from Belchertown Community Field. The Orioles are up 8-7 on the Frontier Red Hawks, who have been decimated with injuries all day today, but yet they're still fighting their way through it as Belchertown punts it on fourth down. Here's McMillan. McMillan to receive the snap, and he is tackled immediately at about the 10-yard line or so. So, uh, Joe, Frontier's going to have their work cut out for them. They're down one point, down two in key injuries. What do they got to do to get to score here before time runs out? It's going to be really hard for them, I know. But they really got to. Uh, I think they've got to put their faith in uh, Aiden McMillan. He's, uh, he's put together an 82-yard night, um, most of anyone playing on the field. Maybe put the ball in Josh Maskey's hands every now and then. Just really give it to their running guys who can try and get it down the field. Yeah, you know, when the going gets tough, the tough guy to get going. you got to give it to your key guys, that's for sure. So we'll see how much faith they have in McMillan as uh, – we wind down here with about four and a half minutes to go. Ball at the 18 yard line for Frontier. A little fumble on the snap. They decide to pass it and a nice catch made. A sliding catch by number 18. 19, 19 excuse me, by Josh Samaski. Yeah, very nice there. Good sliding catch. Caught it on, it looked like uh, Sam Schreiber threw it off his back foot there and Samaski had to turn and react. Yeah, it's kind of a tough react, tough catch he had to make, but he caught it nonetheless. Six yards on the completion. Very impressive reaction time. Yeah, that is good reaction. I don't think I could have done that personally. No, me neither. <laughs> four minutes to go. Second and four. Oh, here we go. Josh Samaski with the ball. And Samaski with the ball this time, and he is brought down. And it's enough for a first down. So that's what you got to do right there, John. You just got to, got to put it in the hands of the guys that are going to get the job done. Yeah, you got to give it to your key players, that's for sure. Samassi's going to have to be relied on a lot these last few minutes. And we have about 340 left to go here as we have a first down at the 34-yard line for Frontier. And McMillan looks like, or no, Samassi, I beg your pardon, I saw it. So Samassi again on the tackle. Looks like about a one-yard gain there. It is, it is a one-yard gain. So, approaching three minutes to go here. We'll see who has more of a will to fight here as uh, the flag is thrown. It looks like a false start against Frontier. Boy, now what you want to have in the final minutes here. Five-yard penalty, it'll be second down and 14. Second down and 14 now coming up. But I was just about to say, you know, well, I mean, it's going to really come down to who has a will to win this game, I think. I mean, despite Frontier having, you know, destiny with injuries, they're going to have to, like you said, they're going to have to def come down to their best players. But at the same time, it looks like Belchertown's really stepping up their defense late here. It's got to be in the heart of the, these last few minutes. It's really about who comes out um, carrying the most. Absolutely. It's all about the heart here. And it looks like another penalty is called. I think this one is against the Orioles. It looked like they flinched, so it might be false start against them. Oh, no. So it, I'm, I'm sorry, it is another false start against Frontier, so oh my goodness. That's their second back-to-back -back false start of the game. Now they're at the 2-24. and 24. Yes, their second back-to-back -back today. Well, you think you would have learned the first time. <laughs> but... Uh, I'd say the one thing that they really need to work on in practice is their, their, uh, their starts. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> really just the, it's really the only oh, thing they got to improve that. on. And the ball is out and a fumble, but a f Frontier is able to recover, thankfully. Frontier's clearly flustered here. Yeah, I mean, it's understandable. I mean, you know, considering the circumstances, but uh, time's really ticking down, and we're, we're down to about our final two minutes here. And uh, we've got 75 yards to go on the field. Yeah, I don't see how they're going to be able to recover. They're a little shaken from the neck injury, but uh, we'll see how much heart they have, though. Down to the final two minutes here. Have to give well 78 yards up the field and get within the least field goal range, if not a touchdown. And the pass is incomplete. 
And uh, I don't think they have a choice here. I think they have to go for a fourth and 22. Oh, fourth down and 22. There's just not enough time on the clock for uh, Frontier to get the ball back. So it looks like they may have to go for it unless they have the confidence in their defense to get a three and out. But we'll see what they do here. They need a real big play yeah, here. If, if the coach is talking it over with them. So let's we'll see what Gordon decides to do here. Frontier. And we will take a quick break here as we come back for this exciting finish from Frontier and Belchertown right after this. Welcome back. We have 149 left in the fourth quarter, and uh, Frontier is really up against it. They have a fourth and 22. They had to call a timeout there to decide if they were going to go for it on fourth and long or punt it and trust their defense to get a three and out. Uh, good timeout taken by Coach Gordon, I think, at the most important point in the game, I think. Yeah, Frontier back against the wall at the end. They really, I think they had a real missed opportunity when uh, to beginning of the fourth quarter, actually, they had a chance to go for a field goal or a touchdown they chose. Yeah, that's one thing that we're, I think oh, we're going to be punting. talking about uh, after this game is over, that's for sure. They decide to punt it away. <laughs> Ooh. And they, the they get it to about midfield. Stop midfield. Hmm. So the clock has stopped with 138. But I mean, like you said, Joe, I mean, I, I, I think regardless of how this game turns out, that's something you have to question the, the decision making there by Frontier. Why they didn't attempt a field goal when it was yeah. fourth and goal? Yeah, only, and they only needed a field goal to take the lead, really. They didn't even need a touchdown. <laughs> exactly. Belchertown will start first and 10 from midfield. So a short kick from the Red Hawks, and Belchertown will start out at the 50, the midfield. And if you're the Red Hawks, Joe, you need a three and out right now. There is no, no excuses. I mean, a pick six would be even better. Well, yeah, that'd be ideal, but we'll yeah. yeah, pick six. But they're going on the ground to play it safe here. They really just need a first down they to really end need, it. Frontier just needs to strip the ball. Ball carry by number one, Cal Gaston. And the clock is ticking under 90 seconds to go. Now, now uh, Frontier uses a timeout to stop the clock with 126 to go. Pick up of six, second down and four. And the Orioles picked up six yards on that play, so it's going to be second and four. J very pivotal that Frontier gets a stop here or, or any kind of turnover. A first down here by Orioles, and I think it's safe to say it's over. Yeah, I mean... But all the respect to, to Kyle Daskam on the on the Orioles, 115 yard day um, so far with a touchdown and a two point conversion, really carrying this team. Yeah, definitely a great day for Daskam, 115 yards like you said. But uh, as nice as the statistics are, it's all about results here. So we'll see what happens here. Second and four from the 44. Frontier needs a stop desperately. Orioles need a first down to close it out. They give it on the ground to number one and... Daskum gets the first down and I think that may just about do it here. Frontier is out of timeouts. Unless they decide to go for another first down or they'll take a knee here. So we're down to one minute to go here. Frontier's out of timeouts, like we said. Belcher Town's just trying to waste some clock here. And they are taking a knee, and this one's going to do it here. So your final score from Belcher Town, assuming nothing bizarre happens in the last 40 seconds. Baltimore, uh, I keep saying Baltimore. I've been having that problem all afternoon. <laughs> Belcher Town is going to pull off a, an upset over the Frontier Red Hawks by a final of 8-7. to seven. As we just take a knee here just to make sure it'll be official, which looks like we will. And we're down to 25 seconds. And Belchertown takes another knee, and that's going to do it here. So your final score from Belchertown, 8-7. to seven, uh, Orioles win this one, a crushing loss on their season opener for the Frontier Redhawks. They lose two key players, and they lose by one point. Joe, what are your final thoughts for this one? Uh, I just feel bad for the Redhawks, man. I mean, credits to, uh, to um, the Orioles here today, but, man, that's that's a tough game for the Redhawks. Yeah, we'll, we'll all keep our thoughts and prayers for uh, 
Mr. Young Man for uh, the Frontier. Yes, it's done. And uh, we'll all be praying for him as he recovers. But uh, final score for the final time 8 7. Belcher Town wins this. Uh, Belcher Town is 1 0 to start the year. Frontier is 0 1. For everybody involved in this one at the FCAT, this is John Meiser and Joe Thompson signing off of Franklin County Access Television. You've been watching Frontier Red Hawks football on the FCAT. So long, everybody. Take care.